It's an honor to be with you. I have a whole big, beautiful speech to give, but I just gave two of them. And I thought we'd do maybe a little question and answer. You've heard it before, and so we could do that. I just want to say we ha we've had a tremendous time in India. Uh, Prime Minister Modi is a fantastic man doing a fantastic job. He's a real friend of mine. And, you know, you always say that in a guarded way. He's a friend, but he loves India. And I'm a friend, but I love the USA. But he's done uh, an incredible job. And we're working together, I would say, better than our countries have ever worked before. Uh, I know many of the people in the room by name and reputation. Incredible job that you've done. Incredible job that you've done. Really inspirational for not only your country, but really inspirational for anybody looking to be a successful business person. And there are plenty of them around. The job that you have all done is incredible. And we know many of you have invested in the United States. And you have to say thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. You've made us even richer. But the fact is, <laughs> We, other than yesterday, which was uh, something pretty bad with respect to the virus, and we'll see what happens. I see the futures are up today, up fairly substantially. Uh, but that's uh, a very uh, serious thing. But we think we're in very good shape in the United States. We've essentially closed the borders to areas where we had to close them. And we had very few. We took in 32 people uh, over the last two days because they were sick, and they're Americans, and they're uh, — Great people. You know, what are you going to do? They're in quarantine. Uh, but we had essentially 12 people. Many of them are getting better now. Soon they'll all be better, we hope. And we're watching very carefully. So we've had a very, very good stretch of, uh, let's just say we're fortunate so far. And we think it's going to remain that way. China is working very, very hard. I've spoken to uh, President Xi, and they're working very hard. And uh, if you know anything about him, I think he'll be uh, in pretty good shape. They're, uh, they've had a, uh, a rough patch, and I think right now they have it. It looks like they're getting it under control more and more. They're getting it more and more under control. So uh, I think that's a problem that's going to go away. But we lost almost a 1,000 points yesterday on the market, and that's something, you know, things like that happen where — and you have it in your business all the time — had nothing to do with you. It's an outside uh, — source that nobody would have ever predicted. If you go back six months or three months ago, nobody would have ever predicted. But let's see. I think it's going to be under control. And I think uh, I can speak for our country, for our country is uh, under control. But again, we do business with a lot of other countries. We take care. We work with other countries. We want other countries to be happy, healthy, and well. They've got to be happy, healthy, and well. It's very simple. And uh, so let's see how it all works out. But I think it's going to work out. Fine. I hope so. We're working very hard. We're spending a tremendous amount of money also on — we just asked for $2.5 billion on getting everything ready just in case something should happen, and also helping other nations that really aren't equipped to do it. So with that, it's an honor to be with you. And if you'd like to ask some questions and find out how much you should invest in the United States of America, I'll tell you exactly where to invest and how to invest. We just did a lot of business with India, where they're buying $3 billion worth of helicopters, great helicopter. We have helicopters like we make the best military equipment in the world by far. And, uh, you know, uh, the Prime Minister actually said if you were President 30 years ago, would have all your equipment. But they started buying many years ago from another nation and others, and, and now they're starting to buy from us. So that's an honor. But we're up to a pretty high number. We'll be up very quickly to a pretty high number. And we do make by far the best, and they want to have the best. So uh, that's what we do. So thank you all very much. If the press wants to stay for a couple of questions, you know, we're going to be having a uh, news conference at 5 o'clock. So you can go to that, or you can stay and hear some of these questions from truly some of the greatest business leaders anywhere in the world. Now, if you'd like to do, I could do this, Steve. I could read the book for you, and we could have a nice, beautiful little speech. I will take five minutes, and you'll be You'll fall asleep, but they'll be — well, they might find it interesting. I don't know about them, but you guys have heard it before. But uh, please, if you have any questions, please. Anybody? Okay, let's go home. That, boy, we must, have, we must have done a very good job, if you'd have. Do you want to say something about the energy business? Yes, sir. Uh, please. How, how are we doing? We're doing great, sir. My name's Dan Buryat. I have the privilege of serving the United States. I'm the President. As his Secretary of Energy, we've had great conversations here in India uh, with my counterpart. 
for Mr. Perdon. Uh, I expect that uh, in the very near future we're going to have some new energy deals. Yeah. Um, and so far, that, that noise. Sounds nice. <laughs> Sounds like a Trump rally, actually. Yes. <laughs> We're actually saying hello to the embassy people as soon as we finish. Mr. I'll just end with this. In the last two years, we've seen a remarkable uptick in the purchases of U.S. oil and gas uh, by India. And uh, when the president was elected in 2017, that number was approximately 25,000 barrels per day of crude oil. It is now over 250,000 uh, barrels per day, a tenfold increase. And we expect it to it's it's going really up. get better from here. It's going up very, very rapidly. Thank you very much, Dan. Really great job. Where is Robert? Yes, please. I'd be interested to hear why some of these companies have decided to invest in the United States and make big manufacturing. Okay, good. Would anybody like to say? Go ahead, please. Mr. President, I'm Sandra Shekhar, representing the Tata Group. Yep. First, let me start by following instructions. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for making a future. Good. And our group has 10 different companies in the United States. Uh, we have annual revenues of close to $25 million, and we are manufacturing plants in Pittsburgh. Great job, yeah. And then we have a chemical plant in Wyoming, and we employ about 42,000 people. And uh, your tax reforms uh, is exceptionally very, very important. So which to you was more important, the tax cuts? We did massive yeah, tax cuts. Tax or the regulation cuts? Well, because I've had a lot of people in your positions running the biggest companies in the world saying the tax cuts were very important, but the regulation cuts may have been more important. See, regulation cuts are more important not to start new businesses. As right. Well. Uh, for example, for the new business, we have some issues, which we represented that have been resolved now. And we run a very large IT company as well in the United States. And uh, we are bringing the skills. We are trying to work with Ivanka. Uh, right. We want to try and uh, scale one million. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. That's great. I heard that you were doing that, and I really appreciate it, and Ivanka appreciates it. And, you know, she started off, she wanted to get 500,000 people jobs. And if you know her, within about two weeks, she had that one done. And I think you're up to over 15 million people being trained by great companies, some great companies. Walmart was very much instrumental in some of the companies in this room. Yeah. They've done a great so it's up to 15. And I don't think government could teach jobs like that. In other words, you teach something and it's complex stuff. Government is not equipped to do that. We could put all the money we want into government to do it, and they're just not equipped to do it. So thank you very much. That's fantastic. Great story. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. President, uh, you talked about regulation, so I right. do want to confirm that uh, in 2017, we put up the first automotive assembly plant in Southeast Michigan in 25 years. Right, that's right. Creating off-road utility vehicles. And the speed with which we could set up the company to get operations going, we have not experienced anywhere in the world. So we've invested about a billion dollars, and uh, right now we're in the shortlist of the bid for the United States Postal Service new delivery van, a decision which Good. should come up by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. and that comes through. We're going to very happily put in another billion and employ about 2,000 people. Very good. You've done a great job. Uh, so when are the bids due? When are they due? Um, we are told sometime around August. Uh, How many vans is it that you'd be making? They're about 180,000. Wow. Budget, That's a big business, isn't it? Yeah, but we were told, we were told that, you know, the Postal Service vans are actually, they are, they are the right-hand drive. Right. That's right. Diesel. So guess who makes right-hand drive diesel vehicles? Well, all Indian automakers. Yeah. That's yeah. why we're bidding for Good. Well, good luck. That's great. That's good luck. Yes, sir, please. Sir, my name is part of the Yeah, good. We've invested almost half a billion dollars in the pharmaceutical, very sophisticated things like <coughs> nuclear medicine, allergy. We are present in 22 states with almost 2,000 people. And the other thing that we are doing is starting drug discovery that's a biotech venture for new drugs, especially for for, for therapies right, which, sure. which has very limited drugs available. Right. So, so my, my question to you is, on the on mainly on the healthcare side, how do you see it for, for companies like ours coming in from India 
Yeah. Setting up manufacturing plants in, in the state. All right. Healthcare is very important to the Republican Party, I will tell you. And we haven't been talking about it. We've been doing. We got rid of the individual mandate, which was a disaster in Obamacare, which really ended Obamacare. We're now taking uh, the shell of Obamacare and really running it well. I had a choice. I could run it well or I could run it poorly. Then everybody would be upset and they'd blame President Obama. We decided to run it well, but would like to terminate it and put in great health care. We can do that. Uh, when you look at single payer, when you look at what Bernie Sanders and others want to do for the Democrats, it will never work because they're never going to be able to do it. It's not going to work, number one. Number two, it's not going to be good, even if it did work. And it's totally unaffordable, which w for you would be a big problem. And I happen to think I've been pretty good at markets. The fact that they are even uh, looking like they're in the hunt, I think, drives our stock market down. Now, when we win re-election, I think we will. When we win, I think the market's going to go up like it's going to be like a rocket ship, like last time, but even more so. I think the fact that the Democrats are so radical, so out of control, they honestly don't know what they're doing. You see what's happening. Uh, they want to tell you about health care, and yet they can't count their own votes. In fact, now they're even saying that uh, if you look at Nevada, uh, that that's all messed up with a vote count, and some of them are questioning the votes. But certainly Iowa was — I've never seen anything like it, and I've been watching politics for a long time, been involved in it now for a while, and I've never seen anything like it. So uh, — but I think the fact that there — you know, there's a, an election coming up, I think you know, a lot of people think we're going to win the election. I feel we're going to win the election because what we've done for jobs and for the military, for the vets, what we've done for health care, what we've done for health care is incredible, including giving options to Obamacare at a far less cost, a, a cost that's much less. Uh, but if you look at all of the things that we've done, rebuilding our military, the biggest tax cuts in history, regulation cuts, that brought all you people. That's why you're in the United States. And then you're very happy and you're going in with more. But I think until the election is over, uh, people are — and it's not just Bernie Sanders. It's others, too. I think if people thought that there was a real chance of them getting it, really — it really is going to keep the market down. Now, the market's been up 70, 80, 90 percent, depending on your definition of — you can look at about 16 different definitions. But the country's been incredible. It had one bad day. That was yesterday. Futures are up today a little bit. Uh, but if you look at uh, what we've done in terms of uh, the percentage, even taking a thousand points off, the numbers are incredible. Uh, if the other side had gotten in, I think it would have been 50 or 60 points down from where it was. Because the big thing, again, these regulation cuts, they were going to put more regulations on you. Could You were being strangled whether it was Keystone Pipeline, Dakota Access Pipeline, 48,000 jobs between the two of them, so many other things. I mean, uh, nothing was getting done. Nothing was going to be built. It would take you 20 years to get a highway approved, a small highway. Take you 20 years to get a roadway approved. And it was out of control. We have that way down. That number is way, way down. And they may not get approved, because if it doesn't work, from a safety standpoint or an environmental standpoint, we don't want to get it approved either. We're not going to let them have it approved. But it's going to end up taking two years, and we're trying to get it down to less than that. And if it doesn't work, at least you're going to find it. How about working on something for 21 years, and you find out that it just got rejected? So half of your working life — of course, nowadays, with people retiring so early, it's more than half, right? But half of your working life, you're trying to get an approval. And then after 20 or 21 years, they reject you. We reject three to two. That happens. That happens. So uh, we've done a real job. But I think that, frankly, until the election is over, our market — it's phenomenal. But our market will jump thousands and thousands of points if I win. If I don't win, you're going to see a crash like you've never seen before. I really mean it, too. It's okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Please. Great. Yeah. I actually follow you guys, you know, what you're investing. Thank you very much for clearing the Keystone pipeline. Yep. That was a great thing. Immediately, once you become the president, right. and all the pipes are manufactured now in the U.S. That's right. A big thing. That was one of the things I said, right? I put a little note in handwriting. You have to make the pipe in the USA, right?
on the bottom. They said, sir, this will take two weeks to get. I said, no, it doesn't. You have to. Now, we had a little problem because they already bought the pipe, right? And that was a little bit, you know, unfair to them, I thought. So we had to sort of let them do what they had to do. But they had bought much of the pipe. And Dakota Access Pipeline was already built, other, except for the one river area that I freed up for them. So it was great. Well, that's good. So is that what you do? Thank you very much. It's very nice to say. I appreciate it. Thank you for the investment. Yes, sir, please. Uh, Mr. President, congratulations. You're doing an outstanding job uh, in terms of developing your economy and the world, too. I might have been more ready if this becomes the first time. Technology company, but more short-term uh, technology, industry perspective. Uh, this country has gone through a tremendous amount of transformation without making a large investment in the U.S., hiring a large Right, I know that. Yeah. Well, we are now. Some of the regulations have to go through what they call a statutory process, where you started to cut. We have the Secretary of Commerce here, and Wilbur knows exactly what this is all about. Uh, you have a statutory process, so we're going to cut regulations, but we have to give a 90-day notice. Then we have to give 120 days. Then we have to give 30 days, and we're in that process now with respect to a lot. No, we're going to cut a lot more regulations. No. No, and we're going to also have regulation, because I think you need regulation for safety and for environmental. Uh, but no president has ever cut anywhere close to what we've done. And I've done it in three years, and some of them have been for eight. In one case, is more than eight. But uh, no president has come close. Uh, but we are in statutory environments where we have to go. We have one where we have to wait six months before we do phase two, which is — and there's four or five phases. But they're all in a pipeline to get cut. And there's a certain period in about uh, seven or eight months from now where a lot of them are going to be gone. But we go through the process. But you've seen a big difference. Yes, yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah. It'll only get better, too. Yes, sir. Please. A warm welcome to President Trump. I'm Kate Kambadi from the Lions Industries. Good. We are investors in the United States in the energy sector. Yep. Big one. Yeah, seven billion. A big one. Right. Sure. Right. Exactly. Right. You're doing four G. Are you are you going to do 5G too? Going to do 5G, and it's all like we are the only network in the world that doesn't have uh, Huawei. Single Chinese company. Oh, well, that's good. Good. And, uh, Put a bid in. Even a 5G <laughs> I have to thank you personally for your leadership. Uh, not only like the, you know, what you've done in the U.S., but it has had drop-off effects on all of us uh, in India. They followed us. All of us in the business community are grateful. And uh, I think that also the CPS process, like we do acquisitions and grow by acquisitions right, right. in the U.S. And they're getting approved a lot quicker. Indian companies, they're getting approved, and we hope that that will continue for Indian companies, particularly in India. Well, it will be as long as I'm here, but if the wrong person gets elected, that won't happen at all. <laughs> and everything will come to a halt, and your unemployment rate will go up to 8 or 9 or 10, and a lot of bad things will happen. No. And that has — you know, it is holding back. There's no question about it. I mean, I think we're favored to win. Somebody said 65 percent. But 65 percent means there's 35 percent of uh, something that people don't want. And it would be devastating, because the economy's never been as good as it is right now. It's being held back by the fact that we have an election coming up. and. I don't think there's anybody, frankly, on the side, on the other side, that's going to be very inspirational. It certainly doesn't look like it. So we'll see what happens. Thank you. Yeah, great job you've done. Yeah, fantastic. Yes, sir, please.
How much? Uh, $70 million to start with. And $70 what? $70 million to start with, and then way up to $400 million. Good. It's nice when you can say that's a small company, yeah, right? The support that the West Coast Virginia government has given us is excellent. Uh, they're proud to be there. It's a great state. Those people are incredible. They'll get that done. So you deal with the governor? The governor? He's a great governor, actually. Good. Good. He'll get it done. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir, please. Thanks for the opportunity, Mr. President. I'm Mark of the Aditya Birla Group. We've actually made two acquisitions in the U.S. in the last 12 years, totaling about $12 billion. The first company called Novalis. Yeah, sure. Yep. Got about five uh, large uh, sites across Kentucky, Ohio. Uh, mostly Kentucky. aluminum. Mostly aluminum. How is that going? How's it all going? We helped you a lot, right, with the tariffs. Good. Yeah. We, you got it very quickly. If I weren't elected, the aluminum business in the United States would be absolutely dead. And the steel business would be dead, too, frankly. What we did, you know, they were dumping steel all over the place, and bad things were happening. And it wasn't good dumping, either. It was real — it was sand steel. It was garbage. And uh, we got that straightened out, so good. But the aluminum business has made a big comeback. That's good. That's good. Right? So your total investment was 12, did you say? How, how much? $12 billion. That's a big investment. It's a big investment. That's good. That's good. It's big. And it means jobs. And we just signed a deal with China. And they're going to be spending $250 billion a year now in our country. $50 billion will go, 40 to 50 will go to the farmers for the purchase of farm product. But uh, China has been, you know, great. It's going to be a great deal. It's a great deal. We're very happy with it. They're going to take care of their other problem, I hope, quickly. And But we're going to be uh, — it's going to be an amazing deal. Okay? Thank you. Great job. Yes, sir. Good. 24,000 employees in the U.S., six new centers in different states. So we're really grateful uh, for all the approaches uh, you put in the uh, West and with, with the changes that are coming, both on taxes and on regulations. We see the growth, uh, frankly, in your economy to be a tremendous boost for the technology world that you do. It's a very good discussion with you, uh, and I'm grateful for both of you. Well, thank you. Great job. I know your company. Great job. And, you know, we now also have it so money can come in. When your money is offshore, you can bring it in before it was impossible virtually, both bureaucratically and the rate was so high that nobody would pay it. So nothing came in. Now we have billions and billions of dollars. Apple's bringing in $350 billion, and they're building plants. You know, I just left one. They just opened one in Texas. I just left, and they're building another one. And a lot of things are happening, great things. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. For the Thank you. Yes. Great. 
Great. Great job. I know what you've done. Great job. Thank you. So I want to thank you. Go ahead. Let's go. I was just going to say, get out of here, but everyone wants a question now, huh? Is a young, young, brilliant businessman. Go ahead. Good. Uh, in the last six years, we've grown to become a leading hotel chain worldwide. We came into the United States less than a year back. Our aspiration was across the U.S. There are lots of small hotels which can do good better technology, better investments. Sure. Run by various communities across the country. In the last eight months, every day we've opened one hotel in the United States. We now manage over 330 hotels. Right. Invested over 300 million dollars in the U.S. But over the couple of years going forward, we expect to invest another two billion in the United States. Uh, we brought close to 8,000 jobs. And uh, we're signing a pledge with the Valdez Group that will bring hundreds of thousands of more jobs to That's uh, fantastic. across Texas, Louisiana, North Dakota, and so on. Is that where you invest, those areas? That's where uh, you put? Across the United States, but these are the states where we are the uh, most. So how many hotels do you have right now, then? 330 in the That's US, fantastic. But That's worldwide, great. over 40,000. That is really great. I actually know of your company. Not such a small company, by the way. Good job. Thank you very much. Please, go ahead. Yes, okay. Well, we'll do one and one, okay? Go ahead. This one is a big one, right? This is a big, this is a big guy. This is a big player. Go ahead. I know him very well. I've seen him on enough covers. I should know him, right? Go ahead. How's it going? As you know, three years ago, it was just the opposite. It was one of the worst countries to do business in. You couldn't get approvals. You couldn't get anything done. You were sued on environmental, you know, for environmental reasons, not because of the environment, just because it was a way of stopping a project that would produce jobs. And I'm a big believer in the environment, and I want to take care of the environment, but they were just using the laws, and uh, we don't let that happen anymore. But if it's something that is wrong, you know better than anybody, we stop them from doing it. Uh, but you've done an incredible job. And uh, the steel industry was dead in our country. And, you know, we need — there are certain industries you can do without, to be honest with you. There are certain industries. We, we can name a lot of them. But steel, you need from a military — and aluminum, you need. you got to have the aluminum. But steel, you need probably more than anything else. You have to have it. And the job you've done is incredible. Biggest in the world by far. The job you've done is incredible. We are going to announce about a billion-dollar investment in Alabama Good. That's a great place. Good. Well, you let me know. I'll be there for the groundbreaking. No, that's a great. I know you're invest. I know you're looking at Alabama, right? I know. I, I had heard that. That's great. For a very, that's a big plant, and that's going to be the super efficient, super modern. That's going to be a showcase. I hear. Well, no, but people know about. People know about that. That's a great. That's a great thing for Alabama, and it's it's an incredible place to invest. One last question to you: you During your last campaign, you announced a trillion dollar of infrastructure bill. Why do you think that you can give this trillion dollar infrastructure bill for digitalizing the laws and the roads during your campaign? I think that your thunderbolts will be a strong campaign. Well, it, you know, th we are doing things. One of the things we're doing: we're going to be announcing another tax cut in not so long a period of time, largely for middle-income people, because, you know, we gave them a good tax cut, but we're going to give them a fairly substantial cut. And that gives a lot of money to the consumer. One of the reasons we're doing well, and other countries are not doing well. China's having a hard time. They're all really 
not too many are doing well. We're doing better than anybody in the world by far is because our consumer is rich now because of what we've done with a lot of things, jobs, but also tax cuts. They have money, and uh, other consumers don't have money. So that's great. That's really — it's an honor to meet you again, and it was good seeing you there. And I look forward to seeing that plant go up. But I think you're going to probably be doing numerous plants in the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. One more comment that I have. United States Workers Union, which used to be Democrats. Right. 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 You gave him. You gave him the bonus. You gave him a piece of the uh, of the cut, and the rest went into investment. No, it's a great thing. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Final question. Go ahead. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, we're in the agriculture sector. Uh, we also do all our global biotech research in the U.S., in agriculture biotech. And uh, I think the, we're looking forward. The farmers and the agriculture sector really suffered uh, last year. Uh, and I think uh, there's a lot of excitement around that. And yeah, there is. Well, as you know, they were targeted as — and I'm not blaming China for that, because they want to try and win something. And they were targeted, and I made up the difference, as you know, with the tariffs that came from China. So they tar got targeted from China, and then I took money from China and gave it to the farmers. And frankly, they didn't want it. They just want a level playing field. They're incredible people. But they did well. But now they're really doing well, because you're seeing the numbers coming out. And it's, it's going to be something very special. Not only that, we have $40 billion coming in from Japan. We have a tremendous amount coming in from the new trade deal that we made with South Korea. And then Canada and Mexico are going to be uh, — you know, the deal is fantastic for our farmer. This is — yeah, this is — that's right. I mean, that's right, in the truest sense. And you have a good new head of the World Bank, too. He's doing — he's one of our people. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, that — that definitely. I thought you said the World Bank. That's right. But that — that also. Well, listen, I want to thank you all. Congratulations on your success. We hope you come to the United States and invest more billions, because I view it not as billions. I view it as jobs. And uh, we have great people, and we have the greatest country in the world, in my book. Uh, and by the way, India, uh, this has been an honor to be here. And uh, you have a very special prime minister. You have somebody who's very special, and he really knows what he's doing. Somebody said, he's such a nice man. I said, well, actually, he's a very tough man. But he is a nice man. He can be, but he can also be as tough as they come. You know what that means. But he's done a fantastic job, and we work very closely together. And we create jobs here, and he creates jobs over there through yourselves. So again, anything we can do, let us know. Congratulations on your success. And uh, I'm going to say hello to all the people now that work at the Embassy. And then we're going to have a little news conference, unless you guys don't want to do it. Maybe you don't have to do it. But we'll have well, — you could just see them saying no. Last time, you know, I did it where I met many, many prime ministers, presidents, all, like, for three days. I said, well, let's cancel the news conference, because I saw these guys every 45 minutes. And when I canceled the news conference, all hell broke out. So we're not going to do that. So 5 o'clock, we'll see you at 5 o'clock, okay? Thank you, everybody. Great honor. Thank you very much.